Hey, new products from Worker. That's in blue. I'm blue. Hello everyone, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret. And that's right, today we're going blue, because this is the brand new Worker Dominator. This was sent to me by Worker for review. Thank you very much, I really do appreciate it. And this is a beautiful translucent blue color. You've probably seen the clear version a lot, but here it is in blue. And today we are going to review this primarily. I want to build this blaster up, but I know I'm not going to in this month. So probably around December, I will have a functional version of the Dominator with everything that was sent to me uh, by Worker. But for now, I would like to get just some quick thoughts out about the shell, the magazine, of course, without function, take it with a grain of salt, but just some initial thoughts on all that because it is very different than the Swordfish, which I looked at a couple of months ago. Positive enough that I bought this stock, the one that's advertised from Out of Darts, because I think it really does complete the look really well. And I didn't have translucent blue stock, so I needed one. Which, we won't talk about the stock, but I must say, this thing is really secure. But, uh, shoot. <laughs> Let's talk about this blaster. Now, I did load the magazine backwards already, and we'll talk about that in my, uh, magazine portion. But the blaster itself, I do like this. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it, but when I got it in person, in hand, yeah. This is, this is good. This is something that I actually do like. If you did see my swordfish review, I was kind of mixed on the swordfish. It was on the edge. Now looking back, I really just didn't care too much for the swordfish, and I think a lot of people felt the same way. There wasn't something too special about it. Great that it was in clear. Great that it came out in translucent blue. Some fantastic mods done with it, no doubt. You will see what happened to my swordfish, maybe in the near future, because it doesn't belong to me anymore, but I think it turned out pretty cool, so I'll show you that one day. Swordfish had a pretty large handle. That was pretty good for some people. Scales, eh. There's no scaling on this. It feels more Nerf um, style. There's a little bit of uh, separation in the handle. It's not just all this smooth plastic. There's some roughness right here and here, little panels, and it is smaller. Now, for some of you, you're going to roll your eyes and say, ugh, why? For me, it's perfect. This is actually a great handle, and it fits, you can see that fits my entire hand if I'm just wrapping around there. This is great. I actually really like this handle. The rev trigger is kind of interesting. There is a micro switch already in here, but you gotta push way down before that click. Hear that? It's almost fully in line with the rest of the handle before it clicks. The trigger pull, of course, is the sound of the boots from the SpongeBob episode of Squeaky Boots, I'm pretty sure. Nothing that a little lubrication can't fix, but, you know, just for <laughs> uh, comparisons to the worker swordfish sakes, it's pretty much the same thing. Squeak City. For this kind of shell, I think the chunk is actually nice. Kind of makes me feel Aliens Pulse Rifle. Maybe I say that all the time. Aliens Pulse Rifle, yeah. But it is, in my opinion, a good look. The Magwell is fine. You've seen it with, can't find anything. You've seen it with the 40 round magazine. And you know that, well, it can take regular ones, a little wiggly, but it does come with some handle scales, which I think are a great idea. I don't know if they came out with this themselves, but um, it's really easy to do. You just take your right piece and you pop it in there. There are four tabs on each side for your right oops, and left, if I was paying attention. Those fit in there perfectly. Mag goes in. Excellent. No rattle. And then I take them out. Honestly, I didn't know if it was going to be compatible with previous mags. So the fact that it is means that whether or not this works, this could still be a very viable product. And of course, 
it has the capacity to take three flywheel cages. That is the other crazy thing about this blaster. The plastic feels great as always too. So that's the shell. It's pretty awesome. Now let's look at the magazine. I will say my one gripe that I've actually noticed a couple of times that doesn't seem like it should be a problem, but it has apparently been a problem for me. I keep loading this backwards. The only thing that will tell you which way this goes is the little lip right here that will catch in the blaster. But the top part that shows, you know, darts this direction with an arrow is so faint. So if you're not paying attention, you just grab this and you start loading darts and suddenly you're backwards. It's a little more obvious on regular, well, Nerf magazines or say the clear magazine that's on my foot that's curved. It, you know which direction the darts go. Maybe I'm just a doofus. But this one was currently holding 44 and you can tell they were a little squished there, so maybe maybe I pushed it too far, or maybe these are just worn darts, and we're finding the problems of the 40 dart magazine. Do I even? No, I'm gonna reload this. Obviously, people have thought about this idea for a long, long time. What if we double stack Nerf magazines? And the common complaint or thought behind it is, well, yeah, but what about foam? Because foam is squishy, and any used darts are probably going to start exhibiting problems which is why we probably didn't have these in existence for a long, long time. But Worker was the first one now to start mass producing them. So I am actually very interested to see if these catch on. And when I put it in and just say if I'm pulling the trigger, I can see that one dart fired or was out and I can, I can see that only one is being pushed. So cool. Look at my testing procedures. This is not scientific at all, but I mean, this is probably what they'd like to see. It shoots the top one. So with this in mind, semi-auto will probably be the more likely to feed well compared to full auto, which is gonna probably get some hiccups if you're not using perfect darts. And the instructions even specify which kinds of darts to use and which ones not to use. Though, spoiler alert, FVJs are what they want to see. All the information, all the, whoa. Oh, mama. Hey, wait a minute. This is a swordfish. Well, well, oh, and there's a dominator. Okay, so um, if you ever wanted swordfish instructions, here it is, just buy a dominator. Better late than never. So yes, this will give you all the information for wiring. There is, it, it is in two languages, which is nice and helpful. I'll actually probably use this when I mod my own. So this is actually kind of helpful. Just again, if you have a swordfish, that's unfortunate. And the very last cool part is the cage. And I believe this is 43 millimeters, but I did get a pretty, oh wait, 43.5. It says so right on the back. All right, that's cool. So uh, crushless, the worker cage, uh, generation three, because it says three, I'm learning to read now, that's good. This is a pretty blue color. So yeah, just a lot of blue here, but I'm not complaining. Oh wait, sorry. A lot more blue here with my wheels. This is the, yeah, the cage pack with the two wheels, two motors, these are Specifically, they don't say, they don't say anything on the size of these. So they're just generic worker brand motors. I'm also not sure though, if you'll be able to see this blue in a blue blaster. Just again, a lot of blue going on here, but that was their choice. So the worker dominator, is this worth your money? Does this work? Is this the future of Nerf? Are three flywheel cages necessary? I don't know. I mean, like I said, this isn't supposed to be a full review, and I'm sure we're gonna see more reviews coming out in the near future. Probably by the time this video surfaces, you'll get some other videos as well, giving you actual results, which will be helpful. I'm not useful. I just show things off. But I think there is some interesting potential here, and questions that need to be explored more. I know there are some problems with this already. I just don't know how serious they are. New blasters might be made with that in mind, like just the 
um, little inserts for adapters with regular mags might just be a thing because ever since the long shot, we've used the same kinds of magazines. This cage that is in here, I am led to understand it uh, is crushless so that it can more reliably feed in the uh, wider spacing for this double stack magazine. Again, I'll confirm that when I actually build it, but that does, already I know you're limited with the flywheel cages you can use in this because worker, and people already found that out with the swordfish. So this cage may be one of a few that you can use, which is kind of unfortunate if you invest you know, $70 in a nice flywheel cage. I believe on NF Strike, these are running for about $37 right now. So if that is a reasonable price in your opinion for just the shell, and I don't think it comes with the magazine, then I say go for it because there's certainly potential here and it doesn't rely on people testing out the max performance. This can still be a ton of fun to build. And I know there's gonna be some crazy stuff done to these shells and I really much look forward to it. I do like this. I do, I do like it. This is pretty. Thanks again, worker. I appreciate this blaster. Oh, we need to fix that trigger. <laughs> I'll see you all later.